Welcome to Seymour from the Front Pew podcast, coming to you from the broadcast studio at Seymour First Baptist Church in Seymour, Tennessee, and featuring thoughts and discussions around loving God, loving others, making disciples, and living the life. I'm your host, Tiger Brooks, and now on to the podcast. All right. We are excited. We have new blood in the podcast studio today. We have uh, Lisa McHenry, who is our kids ministry director. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Listen. I'm doing great. Good to have you. Thank Glad you. to have you with us. And Erica, who is no stranger to the church and her position, she's been here a while, but she's never been to the podcast studio no. until now. Erica Fannin, who is our family ministry assistant Mm -hmm. yes family ministry assistant hello erica hello great to have you with us great to have both you and lissa with us today as we are going to do a podcast dedicated to our kids camp center kid and um, we did the uh, fuge camp last uh, podcast so we thought we would uh, give equal opportunity to our kids ministry and uh, the most recent camp that uh, we were able to go to. So, Jason, kids camp, center kid. Yep. We, we want to talk about the why. We want to talk about the why of everything we do. Mm-hmm. And we feel, I feel like we do a pretty good job of talking about that uh, on the podcast. But um, with the help of both of these ladies, why center kid? Yeah. So, um, very similar to if you listen to the one on the students, uh, very similar to to the reasons that we do Fuge Camps. Um, and uh, for those who don't know, uh, Lifeway kind of they're all Lifeway camps. So you basically start out in kids, and it's it's center kid, and then you get into that's the only thing there is for kids with uh, with Lifeway. But then you get into um, the Fuge Camps, which is then Centrifuge and Infuge. And Centrifuge is the closest thing there is to center kid they're very very similar um uh, we break up the kids break up into tracks they get their choice uh i say they get their choice they pick four and they get two hopefully of those four um that they will participate in each day and um, and most of those are more along the lines of um fun activities i mean everything from just about any of the sports that you you could think of um including kickball and uh, those kind of things. But then they also have um, swimming, H2O Yeah, which is basically outdoor water games. Uh, then they've got uh, games, like, they've got tracks like Build It and Weird Science, indoor tracks that they get to do some different things like that. And then, of course, they've got the, um, the the one that the boys are always mad about, the No Boys Allowed, and they really want to know what happens in No Boys Allowed. And I tell them, I don't know, because I'm not allowed. So I don't know what happens in there. But, <laughs> that's a good cop out. But, that's right. Um, but it's just, a, you know, all these fun tracks that they that they have, that they go and, and, and are just able to just have fun for a couple hours. Um, in all of those tracks, though, they engage them with the gospel. They, they sit them down before they end, um, and they really just engage them with the gospel. And so all that's kind of give you a picture of, um, of what Centric Kid is. Of course, we have worship and church group devotions and, um, all that fun stuff that takes place. Um, and so first and foremost, the, the reason for Century Kid is an oper- another opportunity um, uh, to really just completely engage our kids um, in, a, in a solid, fun Christian environment that gives them the opportunity to be discipled, gives them the opportunity to, um, uh, to, to learn about Christ, to fall in love with Christ, um, and to dig deeper in their relationship with Christ. So that's first and foremost. Uh, but then there are so many other things along the way um, that, that kind of come with the territory of Centric Kid that, that for me, whenever I look at Centric Kid camps, is the why. And, and some of those are as simple as the, the very simple ones of the learning how to go up to Chick-fil-A cash register and pay for <laughs> your food yourself and engaging in some of those aspects. But then also the relationships that are built and, and, and the things that, that are uh, the foundations that come with, with all of that and um, being away from home and, and, and having those opportunities to, um, uh, to see that there are other people outside of our little bubble, if you will, 
that that believe in Christ and follow the Lord and um, and and worship the same God and in the same way that we do. And so there's there's so many things that that kind of fall in line. It'd, it'd be probably too hard for us to really kind of dig into all the little little details of of ways that I think that Century Kid um, just brings so much to the table. Uh, it, one of the other aspects of it is leadership. Um, it, be, it begins to to lay a foundation of of kids being able to to lead their peers. Um, and we see that happening with our fifth and sixth graders that, that start to develop those leadership characteristics and abilities. And uh, But it also lays a foundation, something that a lot of people don't think about. It lays a foundation for what is coming in the next six years with fuge camps and, and student camps. And when you get to student ministry, there's so many more overnight activities that take place um, that are so important. Again, like we talked about in the last one. Um, and, and I think it's harder to, when you've never done it, it's harder to do it. it yeah. It's, it's harder to kind of build into that. And so that's one of the things that's, uh, that's important, I think is, is of a great significance with Centric Kid and, um, and they do a fantastic job at Centric Kid. Um, and they do a great job of staffing it this, this year. Um, I know it's their first year for me, probably one of the best staff that, that we've ever had that just really. They're always really good to be very intentional to engage our kids to develop relationships with them, even though they're only knowing them for a week. Uh, four days really mm-hmm. is all that they really have to get to know the kids, but they do an incredible job um, of doing that. And uh, so, yeah, so that's kind of the whys uh, of Century Kid. It's it's one of those things where you know we talked about this in respect to centrifuge infuge camp. Um, <laughs> You know, when you get to be my age, approaching my age and older, you have what we commonly know as empty nest, right? Uh Mm -hmm. And that whole analogy is swirling around the fact that, you know, when you are a mother bird and you have your your little birds in your nest, you provide for what they need and you Mm -hmm. are preparing them, hopefully, for the time they leave the nest. Mm -hmm. And, you know, mine's about you know, one leg out the, <laughs> out the nest as, and even though she's come back for a little bit, <laughs> but we don't, we know what, you're, we're, what we're talking about. And so this is one of those opportunities that you can begin to build toward yeah. that with yep. your kids, giving them time away, many of them from mom and dad, sometimes for the first time, mm-hmm. um, in, in, an, in a safe environment where they can begin to stretch and mm-hmm. approach, you know, the Chick-fil-A check out people and all yeah. that kind of stuff. The what's the age? Remind us what the age third range. through sixth grade. Third grade through sixth grade. Completed third through sixth grade. Right. And so you've got that aspect of you've got younger kids who quite possibly have never been away from mm-hmm. mom and dad. Mm-hmm. And dealing with the homesickness and dealing with yep. you know, how am I going to survive this? And then lo and behold, three three or four days later they're like, I don't want to go home. Yeah. You know, and you have that you have that aspect. So ladies, I know both of you came in. This was your first center. This was this your first kids camp ever or first kids camp with us? No, I've done a lot of kids camps. Okay. Not center kid. Okay. So I'll get, we'll start with you, Lisa, and just share from your perspective in this new position that you're in, the news wearing off, but it's, I think it's still there. <laughs> how did you, how, what, how you felt about it? You know, what was your experience as you, not only experienced these things with the kids, but watched them experience these things during that week? So there were two main things that really stood out to me. One was, like you said, I've only been in this position for just a couple of months. So I know a lot of the kids, but I don't know them on this side of things. And so for me to be able to build those relationships, to be like, hey, I'm here for you guys, you know, that was really pretty awesome for me um, to get to know them on that level. And it was very exciting. Um, The second thing that was really awesome was just that as a leader, because Centric Head supplies and staffs the whole thing, we're not in charge of doing all the activities and everything. Like we're in charge of making sure our kids are happy and healthy. And then we get to have a chance to have those gospel conversations with them because we're going home with them, right? And they're going to know us better than the staff, even though they did get to know the staff really well. Um, I just think that that was really important um, to give us the flexibility to do that and to have those conversations. Um, And that was pretty special time to be able to do that. Yeah. 
it is really neat because as a leader, when you go to a camp like that, one of the things that you could say, one of the things we pay for is the margin that it gives us just yeah. to hang out. Because yeah. once you're there, you, you don't have to do a whole lot of the, of the nitty gritty logistics. Right. You get to just hang out. Okay. This is where I need to be. This one we eat. Other than that, you're playing with kids and getting to know them, which is really another huge bonus about doing something like this versus doing your own, not, yeah. not to throw, you know, throw stones at any other churches. I've done my own, but it's a different deal. It's a, you know, it, this is one of the perks of getting away and letting other people carry the weight is you get to just hang out with the kids, which proves to be valuable in a lot of circumstances. Yeah. So, so Erica, go ahead. Sorry, I was just yeah. say you need all the help you can get. Absolutely. It's yeah. in ministry, so yeah. it's awesome to have that support. Absolutely. And uh, and it really does good. It, 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 it's just a great to have that week of bandwidth to be able to invest in the lives of the kids and getting to know them better. And, and there's something about removing them from the environment that they're used to, shaking everything up and getting them into another environment that creates opportunities. I don't know. I can't speak to all the psychology of that, but... It's really cool. Well, you know, there's something to be said, too. If people, if you think about camp, man, we see the ups and downs of each other. Oh, yeah. Hardcore. Because we get exhausted. I mean, it is tiring. The kids are tired. We're tired. You're not sleeping in your own bed. Your shower is, well, we're not going to talk about that. It's it's, it's something to, <laughs> to, it leaves plenty to be desired. The food is not the best. So, you know, you're, you're engaging in, again, this kind of goes back to the why a little bit too, but you're, in, you're engaging in life with one another for a solid week um, of where, you know, you're going to be grumpy at times. Other people are going to be grumpy. We're all going to deal with the ups and downs, the emotion of being tired, and but then also the emotions of, of what we're seeing and, and being engaged with as far as the gospel and, and, and worship and, and all of that. And and it's just an incredible time to really be able to, to you know, learn. We're, we are all, adults included, we continue to learn how we interact with other believers and our brothers and sisters in Christ and, and, and how that works in a, in a camp environment that is it's like this giant Petri dish, yeah. um, if you will, that, that allows us to grow in, in ways that you really can't outside, yeah. of, outside of that. Yeah, and it's one of those things like for, for us as pastors on staff— interacting with kids they come on sundays we all come on sundays we're we're dressed buttoned up we've got a couple of hours here that that we're on Mm -hmm. and we're putting our best foot forward and sometimes they think that we are unapproachable you know i can't i can't get out of line the pastor's around that kind of thing and then when when we are all forced to go into that environment where I'm not going to be buttoned up. You know, my hair's yeah. going to be messed up some. I'm going to stink like everybody else. Yep. They're going I'm to coming see at it. you with a giant <laughs> can of shaving cream. Gonna, we're going to, you're going yeah. to get plastic. They're going to see there, 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 there's a, there's walls that come down That's right. and they yep. see us as just normal people like everybody else is. Yep. And the same for adults that, mm-hmm. that are with mm-hmm. them and things like that. And so that even in, in and of itself creates opportunities for there to be a normalization and dialogue to be able to take place. And when you come back, they feel more like, okay, that's just a human being like, like I am. And I can mm-hmm. maybe talk to them about yep. life, that kind of thing, which, yep. which is another cool thing. Mm-hmm. Back to you. You thought we were going to get away from you, but here we are. <laughs> got away with it. <laughs> so Erica, now we know a little bit about the backstory and I want to let you kind of talk about this, but this was your first camp situation, especially taking some of the kids since you've been here. Yes. As right. Well, yes. And and your nest is huge. You've got a huge. <laughs> we know Erica's got. You know she's got lots of kids at the house. And, and I'm just kidding. But uh, <laughs> but see, it's true. It's true. But uh, so tell us a little bit about you know the backstory and the trepidation. I mean that you know which is fair I think to say about going to camp and then the retrospective as you look back and you experienced it and what that was like. So it's no secret among our staff that I don't go to camp because I had a very bad experience as a child. And even though it's not prevented me from saying yes to my kids going, it's also, it has stopped me from pushing them to make the leap to go. 
And after going this year, like I should have sent them two years ago. Yeah. Yeah, I do. And that's a little bit of a regret of mine. Um, it was great. They loved it. They loved on the kids. Just, just deep centered gospel conversations, not just with my kids, but with all of our kids here. And they were so taken care of. Not at all what I experienced in our girls, our leaders, and their leaders. I had nothing to worry about. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. So what was, what was, what stood out to you as a, for you personally, not, not looking at the kids from their perspective, but what was one of the major things or a couple of the major things that stood out to you that maybe I have no, I had no idea that I would experience that or that this was a surprise or this exceeded my expectations, something like that. Yeah. Just the love, like being with the girls and being in the dorm with them, just they were themselves. They weren't, we actually, we have a child here who's very shy on day to day. She was not, she <laughs> ran around like, like she was at home and that was, that meant a lot that she was that comfortable and that I could give that to her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we, we reach assigned kids that were not our kids. And the whole purpose of that was to give them, you know, an adult who wasn't there, but to get that relationship and just being able to talk to those girls and where they're at in their life, being able to connect with them. I know both of my girls very well, but being there with them was a whole different side. And from a parent perspective, like seeing them take care of our kids and nurture our kids, our kids had a problem, like they were on it so fast. And that's not my experience. Yeah. So to be able to see that, to see my personal children loved on, but also to see the kids here at the church loved on and taken care of. And I mean, the girls, the women that we took, were amazing yeah. with all of our kids. And I think that was probably the biggest difference. They had that support system from the camp staff, but also from our church leaders. And so just totally different experience than what I had. And I would encourage anybody, send your kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gonna, they're going to love it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that was going to be my next thing. Just to kind of put a finer point on that, just you have an opportunity just to talk to the parent that was where you are, where you were, not where you are, but where you were, you know, nervous. Maybe I've never let my kids out of, out of my sight. This would be the first thing. What would you say to get them over that precipice in, in, you know, to, to where they'll, they would consider this and prayerfully consider in the future. So, you know, from the safety perspective, like they are totally safe. Someone is with your kids at all times. We're allowed to go into their tracks, and when they when you walk into those tracks and their faces light up because yeah. you're there for them in their time, that is amazing as a leader. But as a parent, like also someone's there with your child. They are not alone. They are safe, and the camp staff is right on top of everything. You know, they're never just like, I've had it. Like, we know where they were. Mm-hmm. And as, you know, as a parent, I can say, like, the gospel side of it, my kid's getting Bible that is made for their age group Mm. and with kids that they're not with every day. They got to be with kids that are from other states. You know, they may do it different on Sunday mornings, but they were together in that Bible study falling, you know, into the gospel together. Mm -hmm. And that meant a lot to me as a parent. And I think what they came back with was worth all of it. But as from a parent perspective, there's no concern. Yeah. Good. (laughs) <laughs> Lisa, I want to give you an opportunity to kind of to, to say the same thing, but I also want to add to that f- from your perspective um, to the volunteer adult that uh, obviously we, we always are needing chaperones typically, you know, to kind of go and do that. But uh, not only from the, from your perspective as a parent also, but uh, speaking to the one who, who uh, may be, I don't, you know, kids are not my thing. I don't want, you know, I don't want to sacrifice time away from, you know, my family to go and do this with strangers, you know, that kind of thing. What would you say to that potential volunteer in order to kind of get them over the hump? So I think um, that they're really missing out if that's what the opinion is, because it's so much more than Ugh, kids, yeah. you know, <laughs> they stink, you know, kind of thing. Um it, in my perspective, it was a huge growing experience for myself mm-hmm. 
to get me out of my comfort zone and to help me experience God at a different level. Um, And also just to serve, you know, you're not going for yourself, right? Because there's a lot of other things Mm -hmm. you could be doing. Uh, (laughs) But I think it's, it's an act of service to be able to go and love on those kids. And it lets those kids know, hey, there are adults out here at our church that love us and want good things for us and that I can be safe around. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, yeah, it's definitely going to get you out of your comfort zone, but I think it's a good thing. Yeah. We don't need to stay there. Amen. Yeah. That's good. That's good and that OMC will get you out of your comfort zone. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you. We'll or, come back to OMC. Yeah. Okay. We got to at least okay. we got to at least hit OMC. Okay. Yeah. Well, that was a teaser but <laughs> OMC. Yeah. You know, I think, you know, just to kind of right. piggyback on what she said there that you know, yes, we are there to engage our kids, but there are many times that we send our kids off and they're with their track leaders and they're in a place where we know they are. They're not going to go anywhere. That's they're, they're confined there to some degree. Yep. And we are also poured into. So like every day that our kids go to Bible study and or rec, they have a literally an, an adult worship time that we, we sit in the worship center and or stand in the worship center. And, and we have a moment to just be able to just have quiet time with the Lord and, and to, to worship and, and spend that time with him and, and with each other. And I think it's also just the, the opportunity that we have. We, we had tons of times uh, that we're, it's, our kids are doing their tracks and, and our adults just being able to kind of just engage with one another and fellowship with one another and, and talk about things. And we're not all, always just talking about what's happening that week. It's also engaging in what's happening in your life and, and, and what's going on. And so we have those. And then on top of that, we are rooming with other adults, and so we're engaging in that side of things. And um, and then and then you look at one of the things that was so cool for me, and has always been been cool for me that because uh, it happens every year when we go to worship. A lot of times, I'll be in the midst of our worship times, and this is true for Century Kid and for our student camps. Uh, I'll be sitting in the worship times and and kind of going through my mind, trying to keep an eye on the kids. Are they paying attention? Are they falling asleep? Or you know, are they they disrupting somebody else but you're looking around most of the time they're doing great and they're worshiping but as you're looking around you're like oh wait that, that leader she's not paying a lick attention to the adult to the kids right now she's worshiping the lord mm-hmm. and and that that you're watching even our adults in the midst of our worship time just engaging in worship um and and so that's the thing that i think you know i would i would want all of our uh, potential chaperones to know and understand um is that you know this is this is as much of blessing for adults as it is for our kids. Um, I would say also we, you know, Erica kind of mentioned that um, each of our adults get a certain group of kids. Um, We do that. It's a, it's a safety mechanism, but it's also a way of uh, allowing every kid to be intentionally engaged with the gospel. So every adult is given between two to four kids um, and those two to four kids are theirs for the week. They engage them, but they also like if we're, we're getting a head count, they know they see where their four is. So instead of me trying to count to 45, every adult just has to count to, to four. Yeah. And they give me a thumbs up. And as long as every adult gives me a thumbs up, we're good to go. And so that's, that's an easy way for us to do things quickly. Um, but no parent gets their own kid. That, so if you're going thinking that you're going to be able to engage with your kid more specifically, typically that's not going Sorry. to be the case. Yeah. <laughs> we are going to intentionally gear you with other kids because the hope is, is that you as a parent, you're engaging your kid at home. Right. We want other <laughs> adults to have the opportunity to engage and to pour into the life of your kid. Yeah. Um, and that that is intentional behind all of that. It's not to say, hey, you know get out of here. We don't want you watching your kid. It's an intentional thing for your kid. That It's an awesome opportunity that other adults get to pour into the life of your kid. I think we all, all of us as parents know that there are things other adults can say to our kid that they will listen to <laughs> yep. before they'll listen to it from us. Yep. You know, they could say the same thing that we can say, but <laughs> because they said it, yep. it, it is true. And you know, this is something I need to listen to. Yep. And that's just the dynamics of, parenting. Yeah. But but that I think that's a that's a very good point that it gives yet another uh, adult figure in their life that they can that can speak into the life of your kid and that's a that's a good thing. Yep. Um very very cool. Don't hear me saying that that doesn't that doesn't mean 
it's not good to go to camp with your kid. No, it is. no, no. I think it's a yeah. great opportunity to go to kid, but don't go thinking uh, I'm going to be solely engrossed with my kid right. because that's not going to be the case. No, no, it will not be. Um, okay, so before we get to the, the, you know, talking about future things, let's break down some of the fun things that happened. OMC was one yeah. of the fun things that happened. So organized this is mass. Both chaos. of y'all's first time for the OMC, right? Now we've done one at home. I got to stay one with this. You got to see, yeah. Uh, so OMC stands for Organized Mass Chaos. Amen. And it literally, I don't think you could describe it any better. <laughs> no. There is an organization to it, but it is mass chaos. Um, and and uh, if you see the pictures where they're shaving cream everywhere and all the kids are wearing their, uh, their grade specific colors, um, that's OMC. Uh, and it's usually the Thursday of camp. And it is this giant game where the whole camp comes together and, and there is a point to it. There's task cards that they have to run around and complete tasks. And, um, and once they complete the task, they take it back and the team with the most points wins at the end of, of the game. Um, and, uh, and, and, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's just a time to get shaving cream on everybody. Cause mm-hmm. that's, the, that's the best part. That's I mean, awesome. it's, it's crazy. <laughs> they, I, I told them going into it, I told all of adults that, you know, you're going to see, you're going to see the absolute kid come out of every adult mm-hmm. when you step on the OMC field. And it, it, I am, I mean, it is, it is awesome. It is so much fun. The kid in me comes out. They are literally our people that come with the belts. That's got the, you basically, I, I must, I need to find one of these belts cause I would totally wear one, but they've got the belts where you can put the cans of shaving cream in. They've yeah. got the holders for your shaving yeah. cream. I don't believe they make those for shaving cream. I probably, think probably not. Other kinds of cans. But it is fantastic. <laughs> but it works. It works. But, man, they are. Adults come up with these these belts on, and they're, oh, man, they're ready to go with their, their cans of shaving cream in That's their hands. Funny. And, and uh, it is so much fun. The, kid, the adults get into it. I do wish that any adult out there, our adults did fantastic. They did great. They didn't disobey the rules. I really do wish there's some adults from other churches. They need to pay attention to the rule time a little bit more. Uh, uh, <laughs> some of that needs to happen. Our Little kids, breakers. our guys, our adults did fantastic in that. But um, nothing dangerous. But just they they do a little a little too much. Kid comes out in them yeah. at times. <laughs> um, but it is so much fun. The kids have a blast. There's there's always some trepidation with it because I'm going to have shaving cream all over me and, and there's, I don't like that or whatever, but man, I, rarely do I ever see a kid come out of OMC without a smile on their face. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's so much fun. And I've never seen an adult come out of there with, without one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> do you know, I think there's an ulterior motive to the shaving cream. Oh, it's total revenge on these kids. Well, there's that, but I also <laughs> think that if, you know, we tried to stay on the kids really well all week to make sure they were showering. Yeah. It's hot. That is true. Hot. You're probably right. And yeah. so once they get covered in shaving, shaving they have to, they, shave. have, they to shave. have to take a shower <laughs> and they also kind of smell good from that. So I think camp was really smart yeah. when they designed that. Yeah. And I really think that's They should cool. do it in midweek and the end of the week. Yes. Well, at least yeah. we took them home kind of smelling good. Yeah. Yes. You know, that was the goal. I got way more shaving cream from adults than I did for kids. Oh, I do too. That's true. We do uh-huh. We do tend to go after each other as adults. Yeah. Pretty good. Most of the adults are already covered in shaving cream before the game ever starts. Because mm. yes. we've already gotten yeah. each other with shaving cream. So it's it's a lot of fun. Um, but it's, it's a blast. But they always... So one of the things, again, there's intentionality behind everything that happens at camp. And, and it's funny. You, you hear me talking about OMC and what's going on with that. Well, there's, there's two rules um, uh, to OMC, and only one of them is the one that I want to share with you. And that, that one is you can't say no. And, and the intention behind this is, is that you can't say no. Everybody in, in the game needs help. And our, the, kind of, there's an intentionality of saying we all want to be ready and willing to help each other throughout the different things that we need to do. And they'll engage that as they end the, the the game. None of the adults ever hear that because they're too busy cleaning up or still putting shaving cream on each other. Um, and uh, But they they do that, say that, you know, we all need help. And, and the, the point of, of, of the church, the point of brothers and sisters in Christ is that we are helping each other walk through life and um, complete the task that the Lord has given us. Um, is really kind of the goal even behind OMC. So there's there's intentionality even in the, the mass chaos <laughs> yeah. that's happening. Very cool. Um, so camps in the past, but we look toward the future. Um, you know, maybe 
somebody's listened to this podcast and they're like, man, I should have, I wish I'd have, you know, heard this before they went to camp, but now they can plan for next year. What, what's next year look like? What, what does the plan look like for our church relative to Center Kid? Yeah. So one of the things that is different for our kids camps than for student camps, student camps, we go somewhere different every year. Um, and that's to continue to engage students with the, it's fun to go to different places and whatnot. Um, they're able to adjust quicker. For kids camps, we typically will go to the same place every year. Um, and that is also intentional because the kids begin to learn the location. They begin to learn where we're going to and fro things. And, and, and they, they're more comfortable. They kind of know the, the setting. And, yeah. um, and it helps them to, to settle in quicker for those who have already known. And um, also helps developing the leaders because those who've been there can say, hey, I know where we're going. Come with me. And, and, and there's an element of that, that that's engaged in that. And so we will be back at uh, Gardner-Webb University. Um, next year. And uh, the intention is to, to continue to do that and be involved in that. Um, uh, and uh, this, this year, we, we took more kids than we've ever taken before. I mean, the most that we've ever taken as a total group, I believe, was 28. This year, we took 45 kids alone. Um, and our group was 57. So 44 kids, 57 was our total number. Um, and um, so our hope is is to continue to engage in that and and um, and have our kids come out of the woodworks again to be a part of that. We also love if if you you've got friends that we, you know there's doesn't listen just for our church members you know invite a friend to come and be a part of that. I, over and over again, I've seen kids come to camp um, that have never been involved in our church. They go to camp and they get plugged into our church following camp because again the the atmosphere and the environment that they experience at camp. So we'll be back at Gardner Webb um, same week, basically. I think it's the last week of June. Uh, I don't know the dates off the top of my head, um, uh, but that we'll be back there and uh, um, trying even to remember what the theme is. You remember what the theme was? Hi. Height or high or microscope something? <laughs> no, no, that's VBS. Hiker. <laughs> oh, sorry. Higher. It's higher. higher. Yeah. Okay. That's what higher. it was. Higher. Yeah, higher. It wasn't quite as flashy as Wow Factor. Yeah. Wow Factor was hard to miss what this year's was, but higher. Um, and it's really going to, but it is going to be talking about, we're, we're taking us higher to understanding and our, yeah. our relationship with who Christ is. Creed is the theme. I guess. The theme, the theme song. <laughs> the I'll let you Creed. sing it. I'm not the singer, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, very cool. So, um, there you have it. I mean, it's, it's an opportunity for you. If you miss out, uh, you, you want to do that again, find out more about it. One of the, Oh, now I remember what I was going to ask you. You said 44 kids and you had a unique thing this year where of that number, how many had not ever been to camp? 34 of our 44 kids had wow. never been to camp. Yeah. And 10 of our 13 adults had never been. That's amazing. Camp. So it was a, it was very much a, a rookie class yeah. <laughs> to say the least, but they all did fantastic. I mean, they all did yeah. great. We had a great group of kids. Like Erica said earlier, we had a great group of, of adults that were ready to jump in and do and go. And, um, and, uh, so yeah, so the Lord really blessed in, in an incredible week. Cool. All right. Lissa, Erica, anything left unsaid that you wish you had had said before we sign off? Any anything you want to leave with our listeners? No pressure. I'm thankful well that my opinion has been changed of camp. And yeah, and we are too. I guess I've thanked Jason for that. It only took him ten years, but I, I got there. <laughs> Very good. I, 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 we always love converts, <laughs> and uh, and we we're glad that that was the. That was a pleasant experience yeah. uh, for you this year. And I was praying hard because if it was another bad one, I was really going to feel bad. Yeah, it was going to make that. <laughs> it was going to make that work relationship <laughs> that much that much harder. Uh, but but God is good. Amen. Yep. Amen. All right. Well, ladies, thank you so much for coming in and taking time out of your schedules to come in and join us for this podcast talking about Centric Kid. And uh, that's going to do it for us. And uh, this. Uh, this particular episode of Seymour from the Front Pew. We thank you for joining us. If there was something in here that uh, you had a question about, you're about to hear an email where you can reach out and let us know uh, if you've got some questions or uh, in, about anything. If, you, if you've been challenged in your walk some way and you want to talk to somebody, you can reach out to us too, and we'll get back to you. All right. Thanks again, ladies. We'll let you say goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Listen. 
Thank you for listening to see more from the front pew. Our sole desire for this podcast is to glorify God by educating and encouraging his body. If you would like to learn more about anything you've heard today, feel free to reach out by email at staff at seymourfbc.org or by visiting our website at seymourfbc.org. If you're located near our community and do not have a church home, come worship with us at 1015 a.m. on Sunday morning. Until then, we pray God's richest blessings on you and yours as you love God, love others, make disciples, and live the life.